A warm welcome, warm welcome to, to the Magpie Mag Circle, Mag the Mag first Mag show of the 23 season. season. Welcome back, welcome back. back. And as we preview, we preview all 90 minutes to the forthcoming National League campaign. Three playoffs play in the past three seasons. Can we go one better this time? Are we better to do it this time? Let us know Let us what know. you think. All the latest, All the latest transfer stories. stories. We might, might not quite nice news, but we do, we have, do the have the latest, latest for you. Well, Matty Matty, Ruben, Ruben Rodriguez, Rodriguez is out. And hopefully, hopefully just clarifying, just clarifying a little bit transfer policy. New head coach. New head coach. New strike new force, strike new arrivals, new arrivals lost to Robert, Robert, trying to make him say to me tonight, tonight is on Stallard. Stallard. Uh, and, uh, and when the 536 train for Manchester, Manchester finally gets finally into, into Nottingham, Nottingham Chloe Page, Page will be with us as well. well. Loads and loads and loads to get through. First, we must start, of course, with the England Lionesses. And yes, I am aware there's a bit of an echo. I'm going to talk that out. Let me know when Stellar's a word in a minute, whether it's Stell as well. And I'll try and sort it. Mine out as we go along. Apologies, Apologies for, that. for that. Now, now I think a lot of a lot of you will. Um, um, and Nottingham, and not double connection. Double connection. Um, um, Darren Ward, Darren Ward uh, is an uh, England Lioness coach. coach. And Mary um, Oates Mary is, former is former West Bridge West Bridge 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 in West Bridgeford. So, were we watching last night? What did you make of it all? Yeah, I was. I mean, yeah, fantastic, wasn't it? I mean, you know, what a an achievement and the crowds and everything that was on, on you know, throughout the tournament, but it built, you know, fantastic, absolutely fantastic. And I hope, you know, it is promoting the game and it lasts, the legacy lasts and it, and it explodes going forward because they've done something that the men haven't achieved. So, you know, cr absolutely all credit to them, deserve everything that they get. Um, um. Has it surprised, it surprised you just, just how big, big the tournament, the tournament has, been has been and what, and I, what think I think will be a, will be a very seminal, seminal moment, moment for, for women's football in this country? Um, surprise me, yes. I think, I mean, if I'm absolutely honest, yeah. I, You know, if you'd have said, you know, they'd be playing in front of best part of 90,000 people at Wembley, um, and, you know, as of today, Trafalgar Square will have, you know, 10,000 people in it or whatever there is, celebrating with them then I'd, I'd have you know maybe doubted that a month ago but you know it's been been fantastic and, and they've been a credit to to the game to the sport and i think the biggest thing the only like i say the only thing i can say from a personal sort of or anything you, you speak to people i know a few people via myself and missus friends who've been to the games because they've had had some games up at like bramall lane and rotherham and, and places like that and we know people who've taken their kids and and be it male or female kids and 100 percent the feedback has been the kids have absolutely loved it the atmosphere has been great there's been no trouble no aggro it's it's you know a really good occasion and that can only help with football as general be it fit, women's or men's but that can only help the next generation of kids who let's face it we're fighting against you know virtual football aren't we fifa and you know game consoles computers so for the next generation of kids, if they get into football one way or another, whether that's watching women's or men's, that's only good for the game as a whole. And, you know, that's that's the feedback I've had. Everybody, everybody we know who's been has had a good time, really enjoyed it, and it's made them want or made them more interested in going again. Indeed. Indeed. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, I'm uh, going to try and speak. speak. Can you hear me you okay? Hear me okay? No, am I all right now? I, I can hear you all right. Yeah, fine. Yeah. We shall get going. Uh, uh, thank you uh, 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 to Lee, uh, Mike Bagger, uh, Michael Schist, and Bob H, Chris, Chris Rams, Neil Birch, 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 Chris Gosling. I like that one. Still better than the Meadow Lane PH system. We like that one. Duncan Comrie, plenty of others. While we're doing this, I'm going to try and talk. Talk, talk. Uh, as little uh, as, as little possible, which will be an added bonus for, for you all. Um, now, um, plenty of people can ask themselves, are BBC Radio, Radio, Radio Nottingham, Nottingham, uh, still, doing still doing full commentary, full commentary and, and those of us who can't get to all the games, and especially the away games, will they still be hearing your tones? Will you still be in the commentary? Well, uh, they've not told me not not to turn up. So I'll be turning up Saturday, whether they let me in and let me do any commentary, I don't know. But yeah, no, we we are still covering, or the BBC is still covering the games, every game. I know, I think 
because they've announced now they're going to do every Mansfield game, aren't they? They've got a three-year deal for that. I did see that. Um, no, it's still going to be knots every week, home and away, as per normal. Um, and barring any anything changing, it's going to be Charlie and myself. So, uh, unfortunately, you're going to, people are going to have to put up with that. Um, but no, yeah, everything is normal as far as I'm, I'm not certain on the frequencies and things like that. But I never, I never am anyway. So I just talk and see if anybody's listening. I, I never really get any feedback like that. So uh, I think we'll be on digital, but I, I don't hold me to that. That's that's the BBC issue. I, I I don't really know that technical stuff, but definitely we will be covering every game. Yeah. Yeah, I believe, I believe uh, what this means, means uh, 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 on the dab, I think you are, uh, on the dab. Uh, uh, all right, well, look, all right, there's literally one thing to go through, through tonight. tonight. I need to be as economic as my words. Um, let's talk let's new, talk head, new coach. head coach. Um, um, not too many, not too many people, people, people would have had uh, Luke uh, down. down. Um, um, there were others, there were others that, were that were at or interviewed that sort of that sort of pulled themselves pulled out themselves of the process. Out of process. Uh, Parkinson, uh, Parkinson from Oldham um, would have been one. Uh, uh, the guy uh, from Derry. Um, um, what do you make of this? What do you make of this appointment? Well, I, I, like I say, I know nothing really about Luke Williams other than what I think we've all been able to garner off uh, off the internet. Um, you know, history that he's had. I do remember him from being at Swindon for a bit because it was a bit of a tumultuous time he had there, but I don't know anything about, uh, you know, any specifics about it. What I, I do know and I have gathered is that it's very much a similar appointment. And I think that's what we were expecting, weren't we? You know, we, Luke Williams is a name that I don't think any of us threw into the mix. Um, but I think he is a, a sim similar ilk same sort of way of playing, same sort of style, ethos, whatever you want to call it, as Ian Birchnell before that. Very much the way the owners want to play. Um, so look forward to that. And I think that that is the right thing to bring in somebody, what do they call it, evolution rather than revolution, you know, to, to, to try and build on what we had last season and the season before and just make it that bit better, i.e. not shipping so many goals and being a little bit more ruthless, cutting edge at the other end of the pitch. So... Um, yeah, time will tell. Obviously, it's a results-based business, isn't it? But uh, I'm sure he'll, he'll want to hit the ground running. We wish him well. We certainly wish him well. We hope he can bring success to Knotts because that's what we're all after. Harder this Harder year this or not? Year or not, not or having gone? Having gone. Um, look, I, th I think... <laughs> You can argue about it, but I, I think it's as hard as it ever has been. You know, I think I don't think it makes too much difference. You've still got Wrexham, the bookies' favourites, the big spending Wrexham there. Chesterfield brought plenty of players in. There's always plenty of turnover in the summer, certainly at these levels. Um, but I, it's still going to be difficult because of that one automatic place. And as we saw what Grimsby did last season, and you know we felt that the the rough end of the stick with that, didn't we? That um, the the playoffs you know it's about three games it's about a team performing for three games so uh with one automatic it's always difficult but knots have got to be one of them teams like we say that have got to be up there pushing for it i think if anyone finishes above wrexham i fancy they'll be promoted so that's got to be not saying yeah i mean yeah, i don't know what everyone else thinks what you think, think. I, mean, I mean there's, there's, no, there's logic, no logic reason, or reason, or reason to this, for this. I, wonder I wonder if wrexham struggle but I think but they I think might they find might it a little, little bit difficult. difficult I think sometimes, I think sometimes of all the of teams, all the teams that make it after South they've got they've to, got be, the to one be the one with I think with, the I think, potential the biggest, biggest hang-up hang and, and the inevitable the though for Parkinson's very experienced guy if they if don't, they don't well, that, becomes that becomes a big a big big, big decision, decision. Wrexham, doesn't it? Because, because they will they be expected to come out of the trap, perhaps. And you know and what you it's know like what when, it's you like. A, when you have a, a really a bad really hangover in the playoffs. Play. Play. And I think, and I think to, lose to lose the way they did at home to Grimsby, to I think that's a think tough one to deal with. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the the virtue of the money that they've spent, the sort of uh, highlight that is on them, the sort of the spotlight, should I say, that, that is on them with the Hollywood owners, the money that they spent, you know, last season, the players that they brought in sort of throughout the season, 
um, the pressure is going to, I mean, we always say pressure's on at knots, and it is, because there's that pressure of success being demanded, if you like. But at Wrexham, because of what's gone on, it's it's highlighted and, and ratcheted, it'll be even another notch. So you're right, if they get off to a poor start, I wonder how much faith the people in charge there will have with, with Parkinson in charge. Will they be inclined to pull the trigger? You know, you, you just don't know. But as far as hangover, I'm not a massive believer in these playoff hangovers because I think at the bottom line, it comes down to the players that you've got. And, and as, look at Wrexham, they've got good players. And I think that's the best way of sorting out a hangover. Now, if they start slowly, then that, that can happen. Remember, Stockport started slowly last season. You know, um, they they went on an unbelievable run, but there was, there was no hangover for them. They just started slowly. And conversely, you get teams that start well. Remember, Boar and Wood were top of the table after, well, I think it was at the beginning of November, they were still top of the table. So, you know... Yeah, I, I, you're absolutely right. There could be a hangover there, but you know, people could level that at Knotts a little bit, couldn't they? In the way we lost to, to Grimsby, so I certainly hope there isn't for Knotts. Um, I think they need to need to start well. They've got some tough games early in the season, um, but you know, as far as Wrexham go, I still you know, the bookies have them as favourites. I still think they're there to be shot at. Now, can they handle the pressure? That's over 46 games now this season. Um, can they handle the pressure? Only time will tell. But the same, again, where I put Wrexham, I put Knotts on a par with them. Absolutely. And I think the, the two of them could be neck and neck. It could be really tight. And I certainly hope, I think everybody knows we all want it to go Knotts way. But, um, yeah, if Wrexham get off to a slow start, I don't think that'll do anybody any harm. Okay, well, okay. we're still trying to sort out we'll this, sort out this uh, uh, system. I may leave, I may leave it until back in a moment. In a moment. Uh, right. uh, <laughs> so, um, um, talking about Rex, um, um, I've seen a few of uh, uh, went down to Cambridge, went along obviously to the Forest game. game. I think, I think that, that, that it is likely that there will be largely large playing the ball, the ball out a lot of people have speculated, people have speculated about, about um, um, higher strong, higher strong um, um, getting back to getting one, back of my, one of my challenges for last year, last year um, um, do, you do think you think we can get, we can up, get up without without tightening up, tightening at, the up at the back uh well <laughs> No, really. I mean, realistically, you'd have to score a hell of a lot of goals. You'd have to score a ridiculous amount of goals to do a, you know, it's harking back to the, the old Newcastle under Keegan days, isn't it? Where they, they'll, they'll win 4-3 or get beat 4-3. You can't do that over 46 games or it's very, very difficult to do it over 46 games. You know, I don't know what the stats are, but very, you know, typically... Championship winning teams are built with with solid defences, obviously prolific attacks, potent attacks who can can score plenty of goals, but you, you need a certain amount of solidity. Don't necessarily need to be the best defence in the league, you know, statistically, but you've got to be up there, obviously, and you know you've got to score plenty of goals, of course. So they have to tighten up. They, you know, every all of us will say that they have to tighten up. But that goes at both ends of the pitch. You have to tighten up at the back. They've got to try and find a way of being more productive going forward. Um, it's a tough balancing act to get them both right. I think they've brought in some in interesting acquisitions, some, well, unknown, if you like, to, to people at, at our level, some interesting uh, players to come in that maybe are going to sol uh, solve that, and we certainly hope so. Um, but, but time will tell on that. And again, it comes down, it's not just about the defenders you bring in. You know, the, the defender, we bring in a centre-half, the likes of a, of a Baldwin or a Bajrami, uh, which I will learn to pronounce his name properly and, and get that right. Um, you know, players like that, it's not on one person's head to come and rectify the situation. It always comes down to your team shape, other players helping out. It's that jigsaw puzzle that we always talk about of an 11 that starts. have got to find a way of doing both ends of the pitch properly, keeping it tight defensively, scoring goals offensively, and everybody plays a part in that. One player we're going to have to do without is Cal Roberts. Cal Roberts. Um, um, where are you, where on, that are you on that charge? Well, obviously, obviously a loss, a massive loss. Um, 
but again, I don't know the amount of money that's been brought in for him. You know, it's been speculated. I don't know how much money they've got for him. But obviously, it was it was too good of an offer to turn down. And I wonder if there's a little bit of the fact that he he's there's been murmurings of him not necessarily completely settled in the last year, um, and he's got a chance to go and play for a club in the top level at Scot in Scotland. Whatever your thoughts on the Scottish League. But I, I, I must admit, I had a little tune in to see him playing or come on and play in front of about 50,000 on uh, on Sunday. So he, he would have to say that maybe he and his agent and, you know, try and force that through as well. So as long as the club feel like they've got the money or, or a, a decent amount of money for him that they can replace him with, then, you know, tough act to replace him. They aren't, you know, there's not a conveyor belt of, of Cal Roberts or players who can be as effective as Cal Roberts. But what we've also got to notice, Cal Roberts came and nobody knew who Cal Roberts was other than scoring a few goals for what's it, South Shields in... Uh, Blythe Spartans. Um, it, sorry, Blythe Spartans, yeah, up in the, in the National League North. So we've got similar players. We've got similar players come in, not talking style of play to Cal, but similar players who've done well at that level below. We don't know what they're going to do. So they, if they hit the ground running, which we certainly hope they do, You've got to back with recruitment. You've got to back that they can do it once, they can do it again. Recruitment's never 100%. No recruitment, however it's done, is 100% successful. But they found Cal Roberts, they brought him in and, and sold him on at a profit. Now, he's probably the first player we've done that with. Um, but I think it was an offer that was probably too good, considering he was going into the last year of his contract considering that there'd been noise about him in maybe being a bit unsettled at times last season, maybe looking for a move um, or maybe wanting to see what was out there. So big loss, big loss, no two ways about it. But if that money can be used to strengthen the team throughout this season, whether it's immediately or when the right person becomes available, then hopefully he's not going to be too big of a miss. And also that relies on some of these six or seven players that came in having a good season, obviously. Yeah, too. Yeah, and, too. and apologies, you might have heard this twice with, with the echo. To yeah. put a bit of flesh on the flesh transfer, on the transfer moment moment with Cal, Cal. Um, it's, um, uh, it, it was a six-figure. Six uh, and as you uh, pointed, you pointed out, 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 going into going the into last the year of your contract, 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 the player for the moment holds the cards. The he would have been, able, been able, to able to speak to anyone who anyone wanted on January the 1st of the deal. 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 Little like Kyle, Little like Kyle with people. Yeah. Um, um, and so and his so value, value, whatever, whatever uh, our, some our, of our more modern fans might think, 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 you know, it is a pie in the sky of a million and those sorts of things when you're in the last year of the contract. And, you know, first game of the season, Celtic, Celtic, or Maidenhead. Now, no. <laughs> much as we love much that, love that. I, think, I think we I have, think we have, have to say, uh, we have to say we have that, to say that, that, that. It's not it's much not of a, much it, of a, it's not much of a comparison, much really, is it? Really and is it? Um, 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 the, the, the I, I think, I think, all round, all round, I think it ticks all the boxes. I think it's a great move, great move. Uh, and I think and it's I a think good thing for the thing of given this in Cal uh, last uh, year of his contract. Uh, uh, you know, he's had a go at trying to get us on a motor to promote time, 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 and unfortunately, it's not quite, quite worked out in that respect. Um, um, the sum of the money, sum of money uh, which, uh, which will be, will be made available, available to be reinvested in the squad, the signings of Ken Scott and Macaulay Langston. The combined, the combined fee for those two, those two by and by large, and large balances, balances out the fee, the for, fee Cal. for Cal. So you can so kind, of, kind of have a cash neutral position, position in money spent money on spent those two, two and the money and received for Cal. Cal. And, and the under have, have made it very made clear that the money from money Cal, from Cal. Um, uh, will be available to further strengthen the, strength the, strength the team. team. And we'll come and on we'll to that, on whole, that whole boss of all player signings and signings the rest of it a little bit later, later in the program. Later program. Later hopefully, later hopefully later. I've sorted the, the echo. echo. Uh, it's Chris Gosling. Chris Gosling, the echo. I haven't got nothing else, but I'm going to pass back to Steph. So, you're a striker. 
um, um, Kedwin Scott, Kedwin Scott uh, Macaulay Langston, Macaulay Langston uh, played, uh, played together played before at Gateshead, 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 got, got nearly 60 goals. 60 goals. Um, interesting, interesting this, I can this, reveal that Macaulay is the first player that's going to be one on one into one. That's coming out on Thursday. It's an hour long, very, very interesting. Two players that. When I was talking to him, he said he didn't, he said he didn't play, play, play as an out as an out, 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 out two man strike, two force. strike force. played out played out like, like to come like in got, got his goals for not necessarily, not necessarily being an option and in his conversation, in his conversation, with, conversation with you um, um Luke said, said I want you in the box in the box I want you sniffing out sniffing out because because my first first of seeing him not similar, not, to yourself, similar to yourself, not dissimilar to yourself, to yourself. Kind, of kind of seems to come alive, to come in, the alive in the box and, and always seems to see the ball, ball really well, really well, 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 if you know what I mean. Uh, so he's not so necessarily, he's not necessarily in, in, in a perfect foil, foil, foil first, although they did get a between them. Between them. Um, um, making the move from that how much of a benefit those guys is it they already know each other and should have played with each other? Oh yeah, I mean, it, for them too personally to help them settle in a dressing room, it'll be it'll be a lot easier, a lot easier knowing, you know, somebody there, somebody you know well, somebody you've had success with. Um, you know, let's face it. One other thing to bear in mind: they're coming in, I would imagine, full of confidence after the season they've had. They've won the league uh, with Gateshead, scored loads of goals, as you mentioned, and you come into a new dressing room. It's always a little bit new kid at school. You know, when you go into a new dresser and there's always that, you know, what's it like? Are they ready-made sort of groups of, of friendship groups, cliques or whatever? Um, and how are you going to fit into that? How's the dynamic? Well, if you know somebody and you know them well, then then it certainly makes it uh, a little bit easier for them. Um, I think from a footballing perspective, obviously that they know each other, other's game. I mean, that, that can only be a benefit. That can only be a benefit. Certainly at the top end of the pitch, um, when you know you need that instinctive link up. You know it, it's not. I say it's, sometimes striking and partnerships is not easily coachable. It's sometimes there's an instinct. There's a, there's an almost like a a, a know how, a, an almost sort of um, telekinetic sort of know how of knowing what your partner's going to do and and what your mate's going to do, where he's going to move, what you know what he does, where he likes the ball. So they should have that. Um, and that is only going to benefit not the sort of bigger conundrum, if you like, or the question or the, the intrigue for me is how does Luke Williams mold them into the team formation? Because let's not forget another one who's gone, Kyle Wooten, you know, with his goals. But, you know, I, and I've, I've, I've had a look online. I've had a look at Macaulay Langstaff and, and any footage we can get from Gateshead of his goals and their play together. I was watching a Kedwin Scott get a hat-trick in a game on YouTube, I think it was, the other week. And, you know, just doing a little bit of research trying to see, that, see bits about them. But what you can tell is that there's not a like-for-like -like replacement in terms of how they play. Mm -hmm. So we haven't got now a big six-foot-three centre-forward who can play with his back to goal who can come back and defend set pieces like Carl Wooten did. And let's face it, it's not easy to replace. But what we have got, I think, is a striker, in, in certainly in, in Langstaff, who will run behind defences, will run in behind and take defences deep. And, and that's not a threat we've had too much of. In wide positions from the wing-backs, yes, we've had pace with the Jaden Richardson, Joel Taylors, Last season, we've had the ability to, to have a bit of pace on the whip in the wide areas. What we haven't had is pace, outright pace, to run in behind a defence in the central, in the forward positions. And I think that's what Macaulay Langstaff potentially will offer. I think he's got more to his game than that. But I think that's what he offers. Now, if he does that, then that can come into its own, allowing the likes of Ruben, Kedwin Scott, players that want to come and get into the holes, into the little number 10 positions, the little, you know, coming in off the, off the sides, in them little pockets of space. Now, that can create space for other players around, even if it's not productive for, him, for himself. But that's what it is. And he is obviously, well, both of them are obviously decent finishers. You know, again, the question mark, can they make that step up? Because it is a step up. There's no, no, uh, no disputing that from National League North. To the national league people might go well it's still you know it's still not in the league but it's still 
there's a definite step up, particularly if you take what the top half of the National League, top 10 of the National League, to maybe the bottom half of the National League North, there's a hell of a step up because you're talking about full-time professional clubs, if you like, in all but league, well, league status, except they're not in the league. If you go to the bottom of the National League North, you're talking about part-time players, a lot of players who are doing a day's work before they play a game. So it's, it'll be interesting that they offer a completely different dynamic and it's how they fit that into the team formation. Um, um, what about other signings? Other signings? Defensively, Defensively at the back. At the back. Aiden, Baldwin Aiden Baldwin is a Baldwin player, is a player that clearly the manager knows. Manager knows. Um, uh, Belrami, who has kind of operated, kind of operated in, defense. in defense, a lot of the time he's been playing central, central defensive, defensive midfield. midfield. Um, um, a new right back. New right back. A bit more defensive, defensive steel, do you think? Steel, do you think? I would think so, yeah. I mean, I think anybody who looked at Knotts last, last season and went into the summer with you know with your transfer discussions and your recruitment, they know that Knotts needed needed a little bit of steel at the back, needed something that was going to work. You know, let's not forget we've lost Alex Lacey, we've lost Dion Kelly Evans, so we've lost a little bit of defensive uh, ability there. Um, so the lads have come in. I like the fact Aidan Baldwin has been a player that the manager knows. Because you, you would think that, you know, that is, he knows he's going to come in and do a job for him. He knows what he's about. He knows he's going to be good enough for the level and going to perform well. So so I like that. I, I like it when a manager goes back and gets a player he knows and has, has dealt with before. Uh, and, you know, the other lads you're looking at, like I say, by Rami, I, I, again, I will get that, that pronunciation right for the radio on Saturday because Charlie will tell me it. But... Uh, by Rami got the the, the wing back Adebayo rolling. Uh, you know they're all there to add. You'd like to you, you've got to put trust in the recruitment. You've got to put trust in them that they they're going to add to what we had last season. They're going to be better. And if not, then then of course we will all question the recruitment. But you've got to back them that they will be they will be stronger defensively as a unit as a team than we were last season, and that could make a big difference. Um, um, Dale Pike. Uh, I put a tenor, uh, put on, a tenor Langstaff on Langstaff, 25, 25 to, one to, to 1 to be one national, to be national, national scorer this, national coming, national this coming, season. This coming season. A good bet, Stel? Good bet Stel? I'll tell you in May. <laughs> yeah, well, well, why not? 25 to 1. The lad's just scored 30 goals, or best part of you know last season. He's going to be absolutely full of confidence. And uh, the other side of that coin, I say about the step up, can they make the step up? Is they should, in theory, and they will be playing with better players this season. So then you get a bit more service, a bit better quality into you. You're still playing in a team that should be at the top end of the table, still playing in a team that should dominate possession in most games, so should still create plenty of chances. And again, just from watching <laughs> little snippets and videos on, on YouTube and that, he looked the lad looks like he can finish, given the opportunity. So, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'll go halves with you. Tell him. I, I, I don't mind. 25 to 1, yeah, I'd, I'd go arms with him on that, definitely. Um, um, I'll tell you the one that wasn't what people have mentioned. Um, um, last year, last we, year went we went with a young goalkeeper on low. On low. And, ultimately, and ultimately, Sam, Sam Slocum, Slocum, well, Patterson well, went Patterson back, went back and kind of Sam Slocum, Sam Slocum saw off saw the off challenge, challenge, if you like, of our Liverpool people, who's now, by the way, now gone, the way gone to the Cup for seasons. Season. Um, um, what about Sam Ingold? Do you Ingold, have any you worries have any at all about him? About with the kind of kind of way the ball, the ball is required to be brought out, out or certainly was last season? Yeah, no, I don't have any worries. I think Sam, like like all goalkeepers, He's, there's, they're going to get critics very easily because any mistake costs you. Um, I think when Anthony Patson came in, in terms of goalkeeping, handling the ball, shot stopping and all that, so that I don't think there was a great deal in it. I think what you did see was the difference between Sam Slocum sort of coming towards the back end of his career, the last final few years of his career as a senior goalkeeper, who doesn't have the, or who has never had to, deal with the ball at their feet as often as modern goalkeepers do. So Anthony Patterson was tremendous with the ball at his feet. You had your heart in your mouth a couple of times, but he was laid back and, I say, we saw him go on and, and achieve promotion with, with Sunderland uh, via the playoffs in League One. So um, you can see the quality there. It's no, uh, it's no slight on Sam Slocum to be not in the team with him in front of him. 
Do I see a problem with Sam Slocum if he's the number one keeper all season? No, I don't. Do I think they might like to go out and get another keeper? Yes, I think they possibly might do. And will it be a young goalkeeper? Probably. Um, and again, you might have that sort of um, competition for place there. But but I think, I say Sam Sam Slocum is a very very capable keeper at this level. Um, yeah, look, we'd all we'd all like top quality players in all positions, wouldn't we? But I but I think Sam Slocum, handling wise, crossing wise, in terms of you know dominating a penalty area, I, I don't think there's any better at this level. Of course, you can question can question with the ball at his feet, but I say Luke Williams is the man picking the team, and he's seen him through pre-season. If he's, he's not gone out and, and uh, quickly replaced him, I thought we need to get somebody in who's better with the feet. So he obviously thinks he can do a job for them, and I don't see any reason why he can't. Um, um, you've kind of mentioned the Rex Moore. Runners and riders, Runners and will do our will top do seven. Our top seven. <laughs> um, um, is there a surprise, is there a surprise this season, do you think? Season, do you think? Well, yeah, there will be. There always is. Um, <laughs> if you're asking me to name it, I, uh, I, I wouldn't have a clue. Um, look, you, you always have a little look at the relegated teams, don't you? And I mean, having said that, I mean, that's just uh, not being clever after the event with Grimsby last year. Because I don't think anybody really made too much noise about him at the start of the season. Got off to a great start, fell away, came with a late run, and then got the job done in the in the playoffs. Um, so you look at them, but you know, turmoil at Oldham, Scunthorpe, things you know not gone so well for for a while. Um, where do I see an outsider? I mean, again, you can't call Solly Hull an outsider. You can't call Halifax an outside bet because they were up there last season. Anywhere lower than that. I mean, Chesterfield. You know, you'd look at Chesterfield again. Can you call them an outsider with the money that they've paid in the past and the players that they've got? Um, I think. If you, I mean, if you're asking me to pick one, I, I, I don't know. Dagenham and Red, Dagenham and Redbridge are always a bit of an unknown quantity at this level. They can score some unbelievable goals and they score plenty of them, but they can also concede a load as well. So, it's, it's. Yes, there will be. If you're asking me to name them, I, I, I can't. It would be one of them and probably one I've not named as well. But again, outside bets, you know, long shots. We're hoping that they're all fighting for, for sort of second to seventh. Well, not to take that top spot. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean I'm mean, i not sure if you can call them an outside bet. I think Southend South will put up a much, much, more, much more concerted effort this season. This season. Change, change the management. Change the management. Got Stanley Victor, Stanley Victor. Uh, uh, as like uh, a football like consultant. And they seem to get, to get their act together second half of the season. season. I, I, just I, wonder, I just wonder at Altrincham. At Altrincham. Weren't full time. Weren't full time. Certainly caused us some problems, problems last problems. season. I know Ian Birch is quite Birch complimentary about them. About them. Um, I know they've had a couple of injuries. For whatever, for whatever reason, reason Parkinson decided, decided not to not pursue, pursue the discussions, the discussions about, about coming to Notts County, County, which would which suggest, suggest to me that the most thing stands, stands a chance, a chance. Um, um, given their, given their, 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 their first, first season as full-time professionals. professionals. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't know how the, the players are going to react to going full-time, do you, as well? I mean, they, they're obviously having a go. You know, obviously having a go, but there's levels to this. We're talking about have they got the budget to, to they certainly haven't got the budget to match a Wrexham or anything like that. But uh, look, he obviously fancies him, fancies his chances there, Parkinson. And the fact, the fact that he stayed there, he wanted to, to carry on. He wanted to see through going full time. But also part of it, you might look at it and go, well, is there less expectation there, less pressure on him? You know, I, I don't know. I, I wonder about that. There's... There's um, who else has recruited? Well, uh, who's the team that's oh god, Martin Tyler, who, who's Woking, recruited Woking. about Woking. That's it. They've recruited about ten or eleven players, haven't they? they they've they've brought a load in as if they've sort of found some money maybe from somewhere uh, and having a bit of a go. But you always get this turnover in this division and in every division, don't you? But but in this division where the majority of players come on free free transfers and, and there's no real money paid for them. Uh, in general, so you always get a big turnover. 
I don't know. I, I think it would be difficult. I, I can't look past anybody Anybody who finish higher than Wrexham, and I hope it's not. I think they'll be going up. Yeah. Interesting. 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 Um, um, how much pressure, how much pressure will, be will be on not the first not 10 games first of the season? Game you also talk about, about 10 game, game segments, segments, don't you? Don't you? We've, got We've got a new head coach, new head coach. several new players. New players. Several, Several key, key focal point departing players you mentioned, mentioned Kyle Wood. How, how, much, how, of how much of this is, is, is it an enforced rebuild, rebuild, rebuild that you had to make this summer? summer? How much time, how much time do you before you think not can be firing on firing cylinders? cylinders? Or is it not or is it in the National League where all you're going to expect them to be at it from game one? Well, we're all going to expect them to be at it from game one. I mean... Let's let's make no bones about it. Made that at home, we expect to win that game, don't we? I don't think there's anybody out there that will go into that going. Well, we'll take a point. You know, it, we expect to win that game and get off get off out the blocks quickly. The players will know there's that expectation on them, and that's whether they're new in the building or or whether they've been there for for a couple of years or more. Um, there is expectation at this level for knots. We've said it. No matter who the manager is, no matter who the players are. That's all part and parcel of pulling on a Notts County shirt. That's all part and parcel of being a Notts County player. It doesn't matter what level you're at, your expectations, and certainly in the National League, the expectations are promotion. You know, we've not managed to do it. We've, we've got in the playoffs three years on the trot and not managed to get over the line. That doesn't make it any more or less difficult, really, for this lot of players, for this season's squad, because the expectation is still the same. It's to be up there fighting, challenging for the for the top spot. But certainly promotion is the aim. And, and like I say, first 10 games, is there any added, added pressure on it? Not really. You just want to get off to a, to a fast start. And I think they've got a, got an ideal opportunity with a home game. Glad to see a home game first. Um, but as a footballer, as a professional footballer, you don't get the luxury of having four to six weeks to, to sort of bed yourself in, really. You need to hit the ground running. Um, um, what, what do you, what do you, Luke Williams, Luke Williams what, do you expect, what do you expect or what do you think, do you think Notts need to finesse or improve upon from last from season? season? Because it's not a million, not a million miles away, away. but it's not but it's been not good been enough good and enough, it seems to particularly, to particularly expose, expose itself in playoff games. Playoff games. Yeah, I, I would say for me, I, repeating myself from what I've said for probably three years or more, that it's that ruthlessness, call it killer instinct, ruthlessness, uh, professionalism, if you like, in, in both boxes, you know, defensively and attacking in both boxes. The fact that they haven't won the league, the fact that they haven't got promoted is down to that just, and not missing it by much, not being miles away, don't, don't. You know, let's not be under any illusions. We haven't been miles away, but we haven't been good enough. Not quite. Winners go and win. Winners go and do it. They go and achieve. Stockport got the job done. And again, looking at the first 10 games or whatever, Stockport got off to a bang average start, didn't they, last season. But then they got the job done. They showed that ruthlessness to win. Was it something like... 20, 18 out of 20 or whatever the, the stat was, they got the job done. They were winners. They were ruthless. They didn't ease off. They didn't, you know, accept a few slip-ups. Not so too many slip-ups. Too many soft slip-ups. You know, we, we didn't have a bad record against the teams at the top. Too many points dropped against teams like a maiden head. You know, teams that you're not expected to drop, drop points to. So it's that ruthlessness to really go. It doesn't matter what your level is. The teams that win stuff, the teams that are right up at the sharp end winning stuff, they are ruthless. They get their foot round your neck and they don't let off. You know, they, they keep you down and pin you down and get the, get the win. And they do the same Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, whenever it needs to be done. It's, it's just the, the mentality. The ability's been there. The ability's been there. You can see that in some of the performances that we've had over the last, well, certainly last season. Some of the football that was played was was you know as good as if not better than anything in the division, but there were too many times when that wasn't enough, it wasn't good enough, or we didn't reach the standards. So that's what needs to change. And I've heard Luke Williams speak 
two or three times since he's been appointed and he's mentioned that professional sort of ruthless sort of streak and after a couple of the the pre-season friendlies where you know whether it's gone well or, or indifferent you can tell there's things to work at there's things he's not happy with and he's going to keep high standards and he's going to keep pushing the players let's just talk let's just talk because there's quite a few people, quite a few people on our, on our on show, show. show so as an ex so as an ex pro is mentality, mentality something, something that to an extent is part of your individual makeup make and you need and a certain you need a certain group, group of players, players. Yeah. and we can all we can all key in those sorts um, um or is or it is it um, um, the manager, the manager, manager coach. coach. Normally, Normally, the very, the very small managers that get results in view sort of their own characteristics and mentalities, and put them, in, put them into, a, into, a, into the into team. The team. Where, where does this where does mentality this come, from? come from? Well, first and foremost, it's from within you, from within yourself. You've got to have, you've got to have the right mentality. You, you know, you've got to individually have that mentality. But there is a, a team and a, and, a, and a dressing room mentality that is set by the manager, the head coach, the coaching staff. Um, that yeah, you know, it's the, the old say, "Who motivates the motivator?" and all things like that, isn't it? it? But but you've got to have your own drive. We're talking about a nine-month, forty-six game league season plus whatever cup games. But we're talking about nine months of the year, and your mentality has got to be right, but there is not a player alive, I don't think, Roy Keane and all them included, that have don't have dips along the way. Then what they're actually saying and doing might be right, but what they're actually thinking in there might change based on form, injuries, things like that. Whatever's happening in personal, private life, that can all affect it. So that's when you need the collective mentality to be spot on. That's why we, we we make such an issue of not having a, a good dressing room and yet the, the, the season, the relegation season, everything that came out of it, the dressing room wasn't right. You know, there were problems in the dressing room. There were you know, maybe one or two bad apples, one or two clicks and things like that. And, and I've seen it myself from my own career, the difference between a good dressing room and a bad dressing room or a good dressing room and a not so good dressing room. Um, and all the while through that, Obviously, I'm in there. I, I was a constant in how my mentality was. I'm not saying that was right, wrong, or indifferent, but I'm saying mine was a constant. But the team, the group mentality, is different wherever you go. And now you can try and influence that as best you can, but it's very difficult as an individual to influence a whole dressing room, a group of 20, 25 players, all with ego, all with gripes and grudges and you know elation and contentment but if you've got more good strong characters in a dressing room then that permeates its way throughout the club you hear about you know, Michael Doyle who's no longer around but you hear about him Jim O'Brien I think will take on that sort of mantle uh, a lot so a lot more this season but he's a bit a good character a good example to have around the place but he can't do it on his own it's not if not, so I've got a bad mentality. Oh, it's, it was Michael Doyle's fault, Jim O'Brien's fault. It's a collective. So you need so it's Sam Slocum. I whenever I hear him speak, he's very level-headed, very sensible, very driven. You know, and I think not so I've got one. Like Connor Rawlinson, Kyle Cameron. The more you hear these players speak and, and you sort of see them, you think we've got it. We've got a really strong dressing room. Because let's not forget, when you're a footballer, you're pretty young. As an adult, you know, you're fairly young and you get some really immature ones <laughs> and some fairly mature ones and everything in between. So it's difficult for individual or one or two individuals to influence the collective. But if you've got eight, nine, 10, 12, 15 decent mentalities, then if you want to be immature or you want to be a bit of an idiot, you stand out and you'll get picked out and it won't be tolerated and you'll get put in your place and you'll get told to know this is the way we do it and you'll do it right and and that and the best bit about that and it's not for immediate success is you see your young levels your youth teams your, your under 18s your your younger lads come up and see that's the way we have to be in a dressing room a first team dressing room a proper dressing room it's not mickey mouse it's not non-league it's not you know Teching that you know that yeah of course there's banter and there's teching the Mickey and all that sort of stuff, 
and it's not always perfect it never will be but they see the right way of doing things and it's like any education in any walk of life if you're taught the right way or you pick up the right values and the right way of doing something at an early age then it's a lot easier than having to correct problems at a later age or a later stage of your career so i think knots have got a really good dressing room obviously these six or seven lads have got to ingratiate themselves into that and get in and 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 add to it add their own personalities to it but i think they're coming into a fairly strong dressing room and you know i hope they just add to it and and flourish from it as well yeah, it, yeah it, i think it's the sixty four thousand dollar question because so, so, you know the you players, know players i know a few of them we've had quite a few of them interviewed on here here and and i agree with you I I agree, it's yeah, a good dressing room some good, some good character, character. Um, um, Lee Curtis, Lee Curtis is now moved on to cover the Derby. Derby. Often said, often said, uh, and he would have been closer than either of us to the players. He, he just he always, just always was a, was a son son that was missing, was missing. That was kind was of, kind of an absolutely an vital, vital, vital ingredient into really really the final menu. That, that stops, stops, stops being the real deal. The real deal. Because the reality of the situation in the recent years, we can argue about, we've not really run down the challenge the top team at any point in the history we've been in the national league. Yeah, I, I agree. And when you're looking for that little ingredient, and it is little because we're talking fine margins, aren't we? The top of any league, the differences is, is the 1%, the, the very, very small margins when... When it's not going your way, you think everything's wrong, don't you? Oh, we're, we're missing X, Y, and Z. But the reality is there, there are fine margins. Um, what What is that one ingredient? Again, it comes down to me. Is it ability? I, d I don't think we've lacked ability. But obviously, we you know you, you always want a bit more ability within a dressing room with your better players, et cetera, et cetera. Um, is it character? I think we've got good characters, like we've said. But you could always improve on that. You can never, you never have too many good characters. For me, it was just that pure, sheer, ruthless determination to get over the line. You know, if, if, if ability is not lacking, then then what is it? Then it must just be then the moments, and it can be the bit that I'll not forget from last season is the last twenty minutes against mentioned Woking earlier at home from one nil ahead, fairly comfortable in the game to getting beat four one. And you just think, what happened in that moment? It's good dressing room, good ability on the pitch, you know. But in that moment, something happened, and and you know we lost all control of, of the situation. It's it's the ruthlessness to not let that happen. It's the ruthlessness to get one up, go and get two and three up against a Woking team that we'd be expected to beat last season, you know, and, and the other occasions when things like that happened. It's 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 not a it's not a finite thing that you can put your head up, but it's just that ruthlessness. It's how did Stockport win thirty games last season, despite such a poor well, I say such a poor, but an average start to the season. I think were they on seventeen points after ten games, and they didn't run away with it. They threatened to run away with it till a little bit of a stumble, but won thirty games out of forty four. Yeah, so you might winning just to a player. player. I would say 80 to 90 percent of that is Dave Challoner. Dave Challoner. Um, yeah, could could be. I, I I I would have to go 89 percent of that is the players. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> but but, but, who, but who I know, I know what you say. Yeah, same yeah, absolutely. Manager, different, same players. Same players. Yeah. And I'm hoping to get Les Brad on uh, next uh, week. And Les has got a Les's wonderful, got a wonderful story, story to tell. To tell. Sorry if I'm still, so echoing, I'm still echoing, 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 echoing about when he sat when next to Dave Challoner at the end of, the end of season, season National League, National League Awards. Awards. And Dave Challoner tells, tells the story about what he did, what he did with Rooney. With Rooney. Mm. And although and Rooney was a very, very good player, player, he felt he, he needed felt to get the the out, the out for the collective good of what he wanted to And he said, he said, Les, that could have gone one or two ways. Because if, if they don't get results, they don't get results, results, they shift Rooney out, 
his position there is very, very difficult. But he made a very, very, very brave, brave, brave and a very bold. bold. He said, then the he players looked at his thought, that worked. That worked. And, 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 Difficult, 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 but, difficult, but, but I, I would say a lot of that is decent. A lot of that. Abs absolutely. I, I don't disagree. And this is what I'm talking about, the, the the individual and then the collective. So you need a manager that sets that group think, that group mentality of, you know, and it, and it will start, Luke Williams will, will be stamping his authority on the group from the moment he came in through the door, from the moment he met the players of, of what the goal is, what's acceptable, what's not acceptable, you know, where the lines are, and, and he will have his own way. It'd be different to Ian Birchall's, even though the style of play might ultimately be similar, very similar. He will have a different mentality. He will run a different ship, if you like, run a different club, run a different dressing room. And that's what players, but you have to set that, that, that mentality. And you talk about Dave Challoner there, what he's done, brilliant. You know, great, great management. But if, as you say, but it could go one or two ways. But it didn't, so he's a, it, it turns out to be a great a great decision to to sort of get rid of Rooney, and and they've gone on and done it. But that shows him as a manager being ruthless, making a ruthless decision, and going, I'm going to go down. It's going to be my way, and if I'm going to go down, I'm going to lose my job. I'll go down with it being my way and my decisions, and so be it. So I've got absolutely no problem with that, and I agree completely. You cannot have a weak manager with a good group of players and you can't have a great manager with a weak group of players because you will not get anywhere with it. You need the collective set by the management and the management team and the coaching and you need the individual of the players that set the collective mentality and get that ruthlessness, each driving each other, each pushing each other. And when you do go through a little blip, as you will do in a football season, something drives the other one drives the other and and there's that constant pushing to achieve right right a great a great network, network, network is now, is arrived, now arrived i.e my son who's uh, <laughs> just finished his <laughs> side, side so he's now going to have a minute around, around so we'll get very we'll unprofessional if i disappear just right. keep just right. chatting <laughs> hopefully we will be able to <laughs> address <laughs> the issue <laughs> shortly um, right but it, it, you can give you a long can answer, give a long answer to this. <laughs> um, yeah don't be gone 20 minutes <laughs> 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 Mini me wandering across the screen, very short. Um, Ruben Rodriguez, do we have to keep him? Have to keep him? Can, could we cope without him if we really cope without him? Or because Cal or because has gone, has gone. Do you think he is now now kind of we have to have him? We have to have him. Yeah, unfortunately, short answer is yeah, we've got to have him. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, uh, it would be certainly so close to the season as well. I mean, with, with, the, with the first game starting Saturday, now is not the time you want to lose another another key player. And and no, we 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 need to keep Ruben. The uh, you know, there's no no ifs no buts about that he knows the club he knows the players we've lost one key ingredient one key creative ingredient i i know ruben was was excellent against forest um last tuesday uh we know what ability he's got so to lose him and cal i'm not going to say it is irreplaceable because it isn't but it puts massive pressure on the recruitment being absolutely spot on from day one and that's a gamble I mean, it's enough. It's a gamble with Cal going that we've got to replace that hole, if you like. We've got to bulk the squad up if it isn't already there with somebody who can replace what he gave the team. Now, if Ruben went as well, that puts massive, massive pressure on the two two lads we've said come down from Gateshead, Kedwin and 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 McCauley. Massive pressure on them to hit the ground running right from the get go, but also massive pressure. On one or two others to come in and perform and there'll be an eyebrow or two raised towards the recruitment if there isn't already that hold on what's happening here why are we selling you know basically at law why are we we letting go our front three from last season in, in Kyle Wooten that's, that's gone obviously for nothing Cal who we've got a fee for if Ruben went as well 
That's basically that that dynamic front three we had last season that was so mouth watering throughout the season, all gone. Now, if you get good good amount of money for them, okay, they can be replaced by players that are willing to maybe come down from a higher division. But you've got to you've got to splash the cash for that, and I'm not sure that's within the model. So, yeah, I mean. I'm assuming you've got your earpiece on and you can hear and you can talk all right, but the end of my answer is yes, we need to keep Ruben. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I'm not sure whether I'm, I'm still sure echoing I'm still or not. Sounds like, sounds unfortunately, like I am, but we'll go on to plan B shortly. Who's most influential for us? I know one of them's gone. Of Kel, Watts, Ruben, Ruben, is, is Ruben is, the is one Ruben we really can't really miss, miss, or do you think you, think you were a big fan of Kyle Wood, can't you? And of, and of course, there's nothing there's the club can do with, with regards, Kyle, because Kyle, he was out of contract, contract mm. gets, a gets a better offer, better offer and is able to live on a free transfer. Free transfer. Um, um, what, 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 is Ruben is the single most influential figure we've got at the club now? Certainly in an attacking sense, yeah, at the minute. I hope by you know by Christmas we're talking about Macaulay Langstaff and trying to fend off bids for him. Kedwin Scott the same. Um, it's the nature of the beast, isn't it? When you when you drop down levels, you you, you find yourself open to being preyed upon by by other clubs. You, you're open to to other clubs throwing money at players. You know Kyle Wooten. It was you know obvious early doors really where you know that he he knew he was going to get a, a bigger offer elsewhere to go and maybe double. Double, treble his wages. Um, I, same, same's happened with Cal Roberts. You, you, you can't force players to stay if if they sort of if they sort of want to go. You, I mean, you can when they're under contract, but realistically, does it do any good? I'm not so sure. So this is this is why. I mean, Ruben is is in an attacking sense. Yeah, Ruben is the the one with the quality, isn't he? In the games, Let, let's. Yeah. Not to, not to put him down, but let's have it right. You know, he, he fluctuates in performances. There's games you don't see him, so he's not completely irreplaceable. But in terms of what we've got at the level we are at, he's the one we know about that is is key to winning us games. Um, so it's vital we keep him. There'll be some decent offers, I imagine, coming in for him. And again, it's a decision with a player who's in his last year of his contract. As to, I'm assuming the club will have had talks with him about a new contract. He might have let them know whether he's willing to sign that or not. So again, we could be heading for another Kyle Wooten situation with Ruben, which also puts the ball back in the recruitment's court, which I'm sure well, it definitely will be happening all the time. They'll always be looking and have replacements potentially lined up. But a player as influential as Ruben has been over the last couple of seasons, and he's got better you know, from his first to his second season, he, he got a lot better, a lot more consistent. Um, yeah, I certainly hope we can keep him and um, for the full season. And I hope he can ally himself well with, with uh, Macaulay Langstaff and with Kedwin Scott and, and them can be a front three uh, to frighten a few others in the division. Um, um, welcome to Chloe. Welcome to Chloe. Hi, Paul. Hi, Paul. Okay. 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 Hi, Chloe. You're right. Yeah, I'm good, yeah, thank, I'm good you. thank you. Good. Well, we're having yeah, loads, we're of loads of computer gremlins gremlin to sing, Chloe. So, uh, 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 we, we cannot for the life of the money, money, money get rid of my echo. Well, I think it's all, right. all right. I'm not I'm sure, not sure um, whether you've got, whether an, you've got an echo or, or not, too. Or not too. Uh, we'll, uh, find, we'll out. find out. So, come on. People have been listening to me in double stereo and stealth. Give us your take. What are your thoughts, ambitions, observations? Delight, delight excitement, excitement call it what, call you, it what will. you will uh, for, uh, our, for younger our younger generation, generation for a four of season in the national league. league. Well, no, first, first of all, of all I'm, also I'm also on my phone, on my phone because, because it's not working on my laptop, my laptop so that, so that might have an echo. echo. Um, um, but, but I think, I think it's, just it's just a lot of a excitement. Lot of excitement. Um, um, 
personally, personally for me, for this me, has been the most been excited the most I've, I've ever been at the start, been of, a start season, of a season, um, which, um, is which is pretty optimistic, pretty optimistic obviously. obviously. Um, um, kind of not expecting to walk the league or anything like that. We've been in it for three seasons now. We know what happens. Um, um, I haven't been I haven't able to get to, get to many preseason games, season games but from what I've from seen, what I've we've, seen we've, looked we've looked pretty good, good um, um, and we've looked and like we've got some depth this season. This season um, looking at kind of the rest of the, the rest table, there's obviously Wrexham still in there that have spent a lot of money. There's another couple of good teams in there, but I really think we could start seeing a gap forming this season. Is what I'm hoping anyway, and kind of keep in them top three, and then hopefully get through the playoffs. Is kind of my hope. Right, we're having an absolute nightmare. Right, I tell you what, we're going to do. We're going to stay there, everyone. Just really safe. Grab a, grab a, grab some, grab some water. Chloe, your clothes. Uh, bad as mine. Um, Cheers, everyone. We'll get out and come back in again. Go away. And we've even been by some of the channels on the message board as well. So it's been a good night tonight. Give us, give us, give us, everyone, and hope it's sorted. One, two, one, two, two. Am I echoing out now? Yeah, Chloe says I'm still, I'm still going. A little bit. It's not as bad as before. Just log it, log everyone out. And do, do, do it. Move, move. You can, you can remove her and log in. Okay. Uh, if anyone's still out there, um, uh, am I echoing now or am I okay? Hey, let us know. All right. Chloe? Are you okay? Are you okay? Right. My echo is just now gone. Chloe, can you hear me okay? Can you hear me now? Chloe, Chloe, can you hear me okay? Yeah, and it's not echoing. Right, so that's two of us with our echo. This is where it all will probably go wrong. Well, how are you, my friend? Still, yeah, I, I'm okay. Is the echo back? Is it me? Uh, am I okay? Are we okay? Are we all echo? No, no, no. You're echoing, you're echoing again. again. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> I'm the bad egg. Right. Can you, can you also speak <laughs> down, so go, so go. All right, hold on. Let me have it. All right. Turn my mic volume down. Does that help? Mic volume down. down speak to you. Uh. Do you have any headphones down someone? Is that any good? Is that any better? I've, I've changed an echo setting, something like that. That's about as good as it's going to get for me. Um, am I echoing? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Technology is great, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> any headphones, Stel? I have. How I connect them up to my computer, I have no idea. Right. Uh, da, 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 da. Right. People say it's not as bad, bad as four. Is it is it listenable, everyone? Okay, let's crack on. Let's crack on. Because um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, hopefully, uh, that's right. We'll, we will mute Dell when you're not speaking. Right. right. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's go again. That's the best bit. <laughs> right, Chloe. So thoughts on the on the new season, fourth in the national league, the younger generation. Yeah, so just really optimistic, um, really looking forward to this season specifically. 
I think we've made some great signings. I've missed quite a bit of pre-season, so I can't really give my personal insight to how we've played. I caught the first half against Forest whilst I was in the airport. I was actually on the plane with the whole Grimsby squad who were just finishing off in Tenerife. So a bit of a random story. But um, yeah, we looked really good the first half and I've heard the second half is even better. Um, I know that it kind of wasn't a... Um, full squad from them but nonetheless it's a very competitive game for us and we look good um, I've heard again we were good at York so it's all promising we've got um, a bit more depth this season I think personally and hopefully kick on from there I think saying there's less competition is quite harsh but I'm kind of hoping that we'll be in that top three this season um, kind of pulling away from everyone else in the playoffs that's kind of what I'm hoping for I fully expect Wrexham to walk away with it but Maybe if they kind of drop off, we're there to pick up the pieces. So we'll see what happens. OK, uh, I'm just keeping on still on mute for, for a moment. Then I want to get some, some thoughts. and we'll, we'll try and work this round so everyone can hear each uh, you can hear us. Um, um, what is it about um, transfer policy? Uh, um, um, there are certain people um, who have kind of consi- consistently peddled uh, this uh, myth that not primarily sign players to make money on money on a sell uh, and this is a model that we as a, as a full club have to put up with and therefore the, the, there will be a con- constant burn of our, our best players leaving because sign them to make make money so uh, look i'm fortunate to speak to one or two people people at the club and let me tell you something complete and utter rubbish okay players are bought to minimise the club's chances of getting prom- promotion. Like like many other clubs, clubs Nottingham Forest including cl- most clubs in the f- football league, they are looking now at average ages as squads, trying to bring those down so that you want, want to talent players that can grow and develop with you. But prim- primarily those players are bought to the club promotion. Not bought kind of make money on because for a moment in three years with the reeds brothers at elm in the national league how many many plus have we sold for money cal robert first player we've sold for money First, so if, if we're kind of like, and I hear the Hillford mod, model churned out, doubt, we're not signing players to make profit and sell them on. We're signing players to try to try to get out of division. The reality, and this is kind of where I want to bring you in now, um, is that if you get, get very talented players and you can't kind of have a, a time period with the, with those players to achieve, achieve you know, or do whatever you, you want to, and if after, if after a certain time, hasn't happened the chances are those players end up moving on because other players covered them i guess really that's we've paid the price away for players moves moving on because we haven't been able to get promoted out of them thoughts are still Am I still am I unmuted now? Yeah, yeah, the two go hand in hand, don't they? I don't think the players are signed. The primary purpose of signing players is not to make money. It is, as as you say, it is to achieve success. But the two go hand in hand. If you achieve success, the value of them players are going to go up. Um, so again, it's it's what we have got to be ready for. In that, where knots are, we are ready to be preyed on by by bigger fish. Unfortunately, bigger budgets can come and take players away. And you're right; there's only one. I mean, we, we've sold as many managers as we have players. You know, we've got a fee fee for Ian Burton as we've got a fee for Cal Roberts. So, you know, by no means are not a selling club at this level, but it is a business at the end of the day. It's not it's not charity throwing money down a well. It's it's got to. So wash it, wash its own face, if you like. So the recruitment is to bring in players who will bring success. But by doing that, or having good individual success, like like a Cal Roberts, they they put their own value up. So so 
it's a good thing that the other clubs want to come and target your players, your manager, whoever it is, because it means you're doing something right. But the problem comes is you've got to have a massive money tree or owners with a massive money tree to be able to be able to keep them at bay and, and, and simply haven't got that at this moment. Success helps put them shields up a little bit. Getting in the football league particularly would help you bat off other clubs that come sniffing around. So again, it's it's success for the club is is first and foremost. And if you get that, then valuations improve because of it. Fan, I'm guessing King Calvert's will be one of the best players you've, you've seen. Sure, he moved on. Kyle Watton's a 20, 20 goal season man, uh, three seasons. He's gone. Um, there is link, links, and there have been bids to put in for um, Ruben. As a young fan, how do you view all of this when you see, see for instance, Cal Cal now gone, Watson has now gone? How, how do you take, take it as a fan? Oh, am I on mute? <laughs> you um, mute yourself, Chloe. God. <laughs> um, I hope made no better than this. <laughs> uh, I just kind of exactly like Styles just said that you kind of got to kind of expect it. Um, like you say, with his not going into the EFL, you kind of expect Wharton to go. And there's so much talk every season of we are supposedly this selling club, like you've just explained, but we've seen none of that until this season. But then everyone seems to complain that we don't ever sell our players and they all end up running their contracts out. And we always have big players like Kyle Wharton go for, on a free at the end of their contract. So some of it's expected, um, but it, that goes both ways for players we don't get any money for when they run their contract out and they find a better club and that suited better to them and fair play, especially I'm just kind of picking on Wharton here. Um, I don't think it was ever his intention to kind of just run his contract out and get no money in for not. So it doesn't work like that in a sense of he was probably kind of just waiting to see what manager came in. because obviously he didn't leave till late on, um, see if there was something better for him. We obviously didn't go up and maybe if we did, he'd have stayed. The same with Cal, obviously we're in a league now that's televised a lot. So it's kind of showcased it all the leagues, the, the standard, and you can generally get players a little bit cheaper. Obviously, we're now talking hundreds of thousands for National League players, um, but the likes of Carl Roberts and other stars of the league, that you've got to kind of expect a big club to come, into it, come in for them. And at what point can you keep saying no? Obviously, um, I heard an interview with Williams saying about we've had a lot of offers for Ruben, and if they're not enough, then he's not going to go. But obviously... It was enough for Cal and that's kind of the point that we're at. And to be kind of not self-sufficient because it doesn't really work like that, but to kind of keep the money in. If we want to go out and buy better players, you've got to sell them. That's kind of how it works. It works from the top right down to the bottom. It doesn't mean you're a selling club. It means you're just trying to bring in something different. Um, and if the way to get money is in is by selling one of your players that you're being offered for them the money for, then you've got to kind of take it. And like we say, hopefully that's going to get put back into the club and back onto transfers, which the club have said that they'll do, which is great. And we'll just kind of see what happens. But for me personally, it's expected that at some point we're going to get the sell players for money. And at some point players are going to leave on a free because they've run the contract out. It's just kind of how football works. Um, yeah. I mean, the latest on room, I spoke to the club club today. Um, so, as the manager spoke about last week, there have been a series of offers uh, from different clubs, this country and abroad, for Ruben. All of those offers have been turned down, um, including one to, to put into context for you out there for a Portuguese uh, Premier League team. Not one of the big ones, obviously. Um, but so, so, so there is a lot of interest. Ruben is the final year of his contract. Um, um, Owners, um, despite what some people will say, and vindicates the owners that they don't they don't want to sell, uh, and the the fact that they would be prepared to turn down off offers uh, with Ruben going in into the final year of his contract kind of tells you that we're not, we're not selling club, that not a selling club, but equally. 
you know, the reality is, is if you can get a really, really, really big, big club, two divisions high, high, three divisions higher, yeah, um, it's very hard from a player's perspective, uh, Stell, n not to get head turned, isn't it? Because at the end of the day, Ruben is a quality, quality player. Um, um, he's kept his head on. Um, um, sometimes there can be offers that come in that can turn your head, yeah? Absolutely, yeah. Um, you know, the mechanics of how most deals happen, and everybody's got agents nowadays more so than when I played, but a player will know what sort of money is being spoken about in terms of salary. Uh, if, if a player is wanted by a, a, a higher league club or a bigger club, they will know the deal, you know, before before they get anywhere near the end of a contract. You know, it, it will be known what's, you know, the, the talking will have been done well before any deal is publicised and announced. OK, so, you know, when, when it comes out in public is not when it's just been done. You know, that's when it's that's when it's allowed to be released. But it's been agreed and, you know, negotiated sometimes months in advance many months in advance so um a player can come towards the end of the contract and know full well that unless a club the club that they're at is going to throw stupid money at them they're going you know and and even then it might not be enough because they might be moving up the divisions that you know things like that come into it so it's never straightforward conversely a player can let a club know that i want to go because i've got an offer that can't be can't be turned down um and if you don't facilitate it, then a player can just turn around and go, well, I'm likely to be injured a lot of the season. You know, that, it, that unfortunately, nowadays, is the modern way the game goes with agents controlling a lot of stuff and the amount of money that's at stake. You know, the amount of money that's, that agents are making, let alone the player. You know, so it's a very, very tricky game of poker that the club has to play that the player has to play and you know it's why they all have agents because you know you can sort of hide the dirty dirty linen behind an agent sort of thing it's not your doing it's your agent your representative um but the bottom line is you know it's 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 the way the game works whether you argue about it whether it's right whether it's wrong it's the way the game works um, you know that that's how it is people say that one not to be a selling club and i don't think there's too much evidence that knots are a selling club but the other side of that is we don't want not to be a bankrupt club. So it is a business. So every player will have a value to the club and they won't sell players that they think can get them success. Because as we've just said, success is the ultimate way of, of making money. Because all your assets improve in value. You get more money in from TV deals and things like that. Sponsorship goes up. So success brings money into the club. By selling players certainly below what they're worth, you know, and, and they've obviously taken that decision with Kyle Wotton. They could have probably got six figures for him a year ago. Mm -hmm. But they took the option that we want success. We think keeping him gives us more chance of success than a hundred grand in the bank or, or or somewhere of that ilk. You know, I don't know that any bids were in of that, but but for for argument's sake. As it's turned out, not quite the way it's gone. But that's the, the sort of decision they took. With Cal Roberts, they've gone the other way. And we don't, again, we don't know the final amount of how much money's come in. And we don't know what the player and his representatives have been saying in terms of how desperate he was for that move. But again, in the top league in Scotland, you can imagine his money is going to be a fair bit more than he would be at Knotts and more than he would likely get in a new contract at Knotts. So, again, that, that's what happens there. And it's the same with Ruben. You know, there is going to be them contract decisions and negotiations and conversations. And it's the same with every other player. And they'll have had it the other way around when they were talking to Macaulay Langstaff and Kedwin Scott and their representatives. You know, and any of the players that come in, they have them conversations. And they don't do it two days before they sign them. You get it all agreed. It's spoken about well in advance. You identify targets well in advance and you put the feelers out and yeah. see whether there's a go at any, any, any uh, point in pursuing it. Um, so 
there's, there's a lot of facets that go into it, but but for me, they're the nuts and bolts of it. And and I think you know every player is a commodity to a club. But credit to the owners, they have not shown a propensity to just sell at the first sign of any money coming in. Very good, very good, very good. I think, I think that was very well put. And 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 just really to echo that again, having been spoke to the club, they are not not acting um, any departures. Uh, this week, um, Matty, Matty Palmer, are we? unmute yourself. Um, important that there's been a lot of speculation about Matty, and the big, big conspiracy theory is that uh, uh now being a backing for him, uh, and, and that he has been, been you know, strategically drawn. Don't get it. I'm not sure, whether, it's a bit Irish, I'm not sure whether this is good, this is good or not, but truth is, he is injured. OK, he has been injured, which is why he's not playing. Um, I think equally, there is interest from Burton. Uh, it's a different situation with Matt, Matt because he has a longer-term contract. So, therefore, he is not, not going in final year of his contract. Um, therefore, value, not to have his value protected. Um, how important, as a fan, how important Matty Palmer to you? Right now, extremely, because I don't think we have a lot of option in that role. I think with the Cal role, I'm not trying to say anybody's a replacement for Cal, but you can kind of move it around a little bit, fit everyone in still. Um, we had quite a lot of kind of attacking midfielders, maybe wingers, that can all be kind of swapped and changed. And like I say, that none of them are a replacement for Cal, but at least we kind of had cover as such. Whereas I don't think we've quite got that, at least to the level of Matty Palmer in the fact that he'll play every game. Um, and it's difficult now. We're now in, what, the final week of pre-season, if you want to call it, coming into the starting of the season. And it's not kind of who's left because Nots aren't going to just take whatever money they can get for Matty Palmer to just get the money in if they know we can't find a replacement in time or if they know that the players we've got not aren't good enough but maybe can't kind of fill his role. So I think there'll be big decisions being made if that is the case. For argument's sake, Burton have come in with a figure. Um, I'm sure there'll have been a lot of talks um, if that is the case. Like, I don't know myself, but there's so many aspects that you've got to consider with this one. Obviously, like you say, his value is protected with his contracts, but they'll want even more for it being so late on in the season and a player that's really hard to replace right now. Um, and it's not a case of we've got somebody that can step straight into his role. So it's a very difficult one. Um, right now, I don't want to see him go, but money talks, unfortunately. And if the sum's right and they think we can get somebody in, then great. Um, at this moment in time, I trust the club. So whatever happens i'm sure they'll make the right decision and if it doesn't turn out to be the right decision hopefully um they'll sort everything out and we'll come to a conclusion that works for everyone um farmer still um as a, a universal voice last season for player of the season how important to the club club yeah massively important he's a, he's as chloe said there you know a, a real Influential player that, you know, so I said last season, could go under the radar. And I don't mean that because, he'd like to say, he was massively everybody's player of the season, I think, pretty much. And that was with Cal, with Ruben, with Kyle having good seasons. Um, but he was the player, he was like the glue for knots that, that that just unifies and, and sticks everything together in the middle of the park. He does a bit of everything. He can, he can break play up, but he can keep the ball. He can play a pass rarely gives the ball away, gets around the pitch and and is is a is an influential player. You know, without you know, if somebody looked at his stats for the season in terms of goals and assists, he would go under the radar. But um, you know, when you look at everything together, all his attributes, his passing stats and things like that, then you know, he, he's an all round he's an old school midfield player in a lot of respects. He can do a bit of everything. Um and a massively important player. I think Chloe's dead right. I think if it is Burton that are interested, then then obviously there's a there's a bit of a bit of history there between the two. But with a two year contract, with being in the final week before the season, it would have to be a pretty lucrative offer 
for Knox to even entertain to to even entertain it. And truth be told, I don't think Burton are in the position to be making particularly lucrative offers. I mean, ben Robinson runs a pretty tight ship, I think, at Burton in terms of the finances. Um, so, you know, you would you would think that if they are wanting to do something, that they're wanting to be in touch with his representatives and needing him to sort of force it through a little bit from from his end, which we hope isn't going to happen. Uh, but I, I think he's yeah, he's a vital player for Knotts, a, a real you know real diamond in the middle of the park, and, and he would be difficult to replace. That said, I'd like to see somebody like we you know players that have been there. Ed Francis is a player I'm looking at this season. Had a year there, you know, didn't pull up any trees last season, but didn't let anybody down. But you want to see him? Can he step up a level? Can he, you know? force himself on the scene. You know, it, it needs other players to step up. It, it can't just be about one or two players. You know, if Ruben's injured, oh, what happens? We then become half a team. If, if Matty Palmer is injured and we don't have him, what then? Oh, well, we, we're half the team without him. We need other players to step up. We cannot rely on just one or two players in key areas of the pitch. OK. Um, right. Right. Uh... Well, you, Chloe, and you, and you first on this. Everyone, one, and then we'll wrap up on what's been a fairly eventful opening broadcast. Of the, um, your one, two, three for the season, and everyone, don't don't worry about one, seven, one, two, three, uh, in order. Start tap tap away. Let's see what we, we all think. Chloe, one, one, two, three. Come on, or do them in reverse order if you want. I'll go from top to bottom, and this might sound a little bit pessimistic, but. I'm just, I don't want to get too overexcited. I've been there, done that. Um, so I've got Wrexham top. I've then got Solihull second and then us third. But it, it was a tough one um, this season, to be completely. It's tough every year and you can never predict it. But yeah. top three I've got us in, but Wrexham and Solihull to finish above us, possibly. OK. Uh, Ian Birchnell's gone for, for Wrexham. Knotts and Chesterfield. Uh, most people, uh, let's have a look. Andrew and Bath have gone for Wrexham, Knotts. Uh, Chris Chris has gone for Re Wrexham to win it. Uh, looks like Re Rex Chesterfield field seem to be most people's uh, top, top three. Uh, I'll give you a bit, a bit of time, Stel. Um, there's no way nor rationale in all this. Um, I don't think Wrexham are going to be in the top three. three. I, I I stand to be corrected here. Um, a lot of you, not sure, not sure. Not sure. Uh, uh, I think I think South End will be a surprise package this season. I think I think they may third. Um, I think Sayhill are gonna gonna be. I think they're gonna be be very close. Uh, um, look, blind optimist, miss. I'm sticking knots down down on as well. But like I did last year, Stella, I'm just putting an asterisk against that. And the asterisk has to be, we spoke a bit about mentality. For me, we've got to defend better. We've, we've got to be more resilient. We've got to be nastier. Uh, I, I think we've got to be uglier to watch in respects. My concern is, is if we continue to play a totally purest bond of football, I don't think that gets us even the, the top three. I don't think that gets us the top three. So one one with the with the asterisk, okay? Uh, and, and I've got the two S's, Solly Ullens, Ullens send in the top, top three. And I do, uh, and, I, and I, you know, I'm in the top, top seven, okay? So. Um, right. Can, can I borrow that asterisk as well? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Chloe didn't realise she could have an asterisk. Yeah, no. I'm always going to go knots one. I'm always going to go knots one. But like I said, like I said at the start, I, I I do disagree with you. I think anybody who finishes above Wrexham will be promoted. So I've got Wrexham two, and I I don't know how Shimanga's injury is. I don't know how long he's going to be out mm. for. I think that plays a big part for Chesterfield. I would go Chesterfield three. If not, I would go Solihull three. Uh, but that would be my one, two, three. 
Okay, uh, Andy, Andy, he's gone. Dark horses talking. Chris Gosling, big statement that ball. They, they've just just signed Andy from Bore and Wood. Oh, we're on air. <laughs> Um, William Dodds woking the prize this season. Uh, it's no trouble. It's sport sport. If Wrexham struggle, they sack Arky and splash the cash to get to get some water. I don't think Dave Challoner would <laughs> wants to down to the, the down to Wrexham for third time because he, he, he moment would would be your go to man, man to get a club promoted out of the national national league when he's not got a got a full season. Is it? Um, do, 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 do. Right, I think that, that's it for everyone Before, before any more uh, tech, tech gremlins and glitches um, Chloe, even your train ran late Didn't it tonight? So, so if Bolly's going to be here at the start um, We look forward to seeing you through, throughout the season Stel, Stel, we look forward to your, your dulcet tones uh, From Saturday I actually will not be at the game So my, my record of going to every game uh, Is uh, I'll, I'll have no attendance record on Saturday I'm out with one of my pants, Major League Six Soccer uh, in Los Angeles, as we as you, uh, for three days, and then then Minnesota for the MLS also week. So I will miss the first game game of the season. Apologies for that. Um, we have done a one one with Macaulay Langstaff. Hence, I've changed the back backdrop and all the number nines uh, at the back. He's wearing number nine for the for the first time. His normal number. number. Um, you can get that on, that on Thursday evening. Uh, 60 Minutes, Macaulay Langstaff. Uh, some gems there. He's rooming with Kedwin Scott, who's refusing to, to call for him. Uh, Macaulay is doing uh, uh, year two of, of a sports science degree. Uh, he's an interesting character. Uh, uh, he's a good lad. Uh, um, to say one or two. A little, little bit of mustard in him, we hope. hope. Uh, Chloe, Chloe, thank you very much indeed. Let, let you do what you're doing. I used, I used to listen to the show. Are you you doing May now or, or are you more back in Nottingham? No, back in Nottingham as far as I'm aware, job hunting. So we'll see where that takes me. But for now, I'm back in Nottingham. Very good. Well, thank you ever some ever some apologies for all the gremlins tonight. Um, we will be back uh, next week when I'm back for, from dates. Th thank you, everybody. And here's to a fourth season in the league, which, which we hope will lead to a little bit more success than the new league. Cheers for listening, everyone. Good night.